Here we have the freshly released Acrocanthosaurus from Editions Ascended Mods by Garuga. The Acro is a very stunning theropod that has adrenaline related fighting features that really set it apart from other carnivores. There are two varieties of Acro. This one is the Ascended Acrocanthosaurus. This one is the non-ascended Acrocanthosaurus. The word ascended will be absent in its name and in its blueprint. Only Acrocanthosaurus. As you can see, since I fed them both a candy from the Valentine event, they have distinctly different patterns and color regions that set them apart. What also sets these creatures apart is they cannot breed with each other. The Ascended can only breed with others of their name, and the regular Acro can only breed with theirs. I'm not sure if this is meant to be a feature, but it is what I found when testing them out. Other than these two differences, both Acro function in identical ways, and they are essentially the same type of creature. So of course I had to go find and tame one. Let's get into it. First things first, I went into my dino finder. I love the dino finder, it's great. And I found two ascended acro, a male and a female. Female, level 20, male, 130. You know what, I want them both, who cares? They're the only ones on the map and they're just up the way. So, got on my bug and went zooming. We touched down on the bug. And as you can see, female ascended acro level 20 is just over yonder. It feels a little too close for comfort, but I focus on the task. I jump off the bug and we start building. Now we're just using a simple trap, uh, a humble trap. It's, you know, the middle dino gates. We don't want to be too complicated and it's a hell of a time trying to tame these guys if you do not have a trap, if impossible. So we're going with the baby trap. Uh, I put in some, you know, some bear traps in there. It should keep it still for me to put in the last piece and, and enclose the creature. It should be foolproof. The thing is that Akras can destroy metal with some of their special attacks. Something to be wary of. Something to keep in mind for the future. The next step was trying to get her into the trap. I tried doing it the old fashioned way by luring her in. You know, follow the leader type deal. But she refused. There was either a creature nearby that she wanted to destroy, something she wanted to eat. Her turn radius was too big. There was just no pleasing her. She wouldn't go in. So enough was enough. I, I did what any normal person with a giant bug would do. And I picked up that dino and I popped her in the trap. Baby, baby toddler on timeout. That's all there was to it. I finally had her in the trap. We put the last piece in. She's in there for sure. There's still a couple bear traps in there. Shouldn't even be a problem when we run out because she can't. First victory. First victory on a series of many. Remember this for later. First step of the tame. Inflict damage upon the acro until acro takes defensive stance. This is very critical. Also critical, she's a low level. She can take very little damage. We gotta be careful with this. When she does take defensive stance, continue inflicting damage on her side. She takes less damage there. This is good. This is a critical moment. When she does this specific roar, we must run up. Hit the prompt. The prompt involves feeding her narcotic or biotoxin, whatever is in your last slot, 
directly by mouth as doctor's approval. She cannot be tranquilized by traditional methods such as trank darts or trank arrows. We must give her the tranquilizer by mouth directly. This is tricky. She likes to chomp. So we got to get her when her mouth is open. For every successful attempt at feeding the narcotic, the acro fully heals. Very important so you don't have to worry about how is she going to survive the next round. She will, as long as you fed the narcotic. sure what to really call this roar but i do consider it a taunt it's kind of a taunt you know but it's also a trick you see you think it's doing the roar where you can put the food in but it's not as soon as you get too close she hits you and you go flying devastated this was so devastating for me and myself <laughs> For the afro anyway every time she does this specific roar she fully heals so that is a plus no worries if she keeps doing this repeatedly you just keep applying damage very bad for you if you fall for the trap for roar and then she also hits you with her face it's crazy i i i hated it i was having a hard time doing this So I get back and we get back into the tame. She's fully healed. Okay, so she can take some blows. She also has her torpor halfway. She might need maybe two more feeds of narcotic. This is fine. We get into the motions. Um, things are not going so well. She's taking a lot of damage. I may have missed a few shots. Okay. And her health is really low. So I'm thinking, hey, I'm going to go find a creature and I'm going to feed it to her. Unfortunately, I had to decimate everything in the area so they would not be a distraction. I go a little ways and I find a level 10 theory. I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to pick up this theory. She's going to take a couple chomps out of them. Everything will be fine and dandy. Everything was not fine and dandy. thinking, hey, Indy, super dumb of you. What the heck were you thinking feeding this majorly mortally wounded acro a freaking deadly Edward Scissorhands bird? Okay. I'm stunned and appalled at myself. Horrible moment, horrible moment in Indy history, I swear. But no matter, we still have the level 130 male. I would have liked to have the 20 female because then we could just immediately start reading them. But you know what? The cards were dealt not in her favor. So we must move on. First step, grab him. Second step, put him in the trap like a good boy. All is well. Let's begin. Now, some may wonder, Indy, if all I have to do is damage upon the acro, why are you using a bow? There's so many other high-powered weapons you could be using that deal more damage. Faster, stronger, better. Well, for you, I say, I like using a bow. I don't have to go through the tedium of making the ammunition for it, which is, to me, very tedious. I don't like it. And I can just honestly run around and make stone arrows and put it in my compound bow. It's great. I have more control. I can do a little bit uh, less damage, a little bit more damage depending on how far I pull it. It's great for me and it costs a bit less to repair. 
it's fine, it's fine. It takes a little longer, but uh, it's easier just carrying a bunch of stone arrows than a bunch of uh, a bunch of bullets, and then I have to go all the way back home to make more if I run out. And believe me, I run out of a lot of arrows during this entire thing. So we keep doing this dance for a little while. I shoot my little arrows with my little compound bow. He roars and fakes me out. I go flying. I keep pelting him with my little stone arrows and the compound bow. I continue to fall for the taunt, but fortunately he's healing. But he's also doing damage to my metal gates. Remember this. And then it finally happens. He looked like he was still stuck inside one of the gates, but I don't know. He could be tricky. So I decided to scout it out a little bit, see if there is anything amiss. Could he get out? Was he really stuck? He was not really stuck. He easily got out. He just needed to move a little bit. And it was time to build a new trap. I went to fetch some more supplies. Built the new trap. A little bit bigger than the first one, I will admit. Felt we needed a little bit more room for this big boy. Then it was time to fetch the big boy and put him in his new little temporary home. Then we restarted the taming process. For what felt like a few hours, we went through the whole dance of me, Hitty the arrow, creature roar at me. I put the narcotic in the mouth hole. Biotoxin tastes very yucky. I do not blame him. I get him into the defense posture many times, and I do continue to fall for his tricksy ways. But I do learn how to learn, and I learn not to fall for his tricksy ways, at least sometimes. As I am forget. It is quite important to maintain aggro and not back up too far away, otherwise he loses the defensive posture and you have to start all over. Very frustrating, very annoying, takes a lot of time. I get flung across the jungle and that's the last draw. I'm very tired of this. So I decide to build myself a cute little backboard. So if he does blow me away again because I'm not paying attention because I've been doing this for almost three hours and my brain is tired, that I won't go flying into the jungle. I'll just go flying against the wall and I won't be so far away and I won't fall down the hill from fall damage and die. Satisfied with my work, I decide to 
craft a bunch of arrows because I'm definitely going to need them. We're starting over at this point. And then it happens. I go back to doing the tame and I forget to press record because I had paused my recording. So just for you, I went ahead, waited a couple hours for another acro to appear. It was a lower level one, and I decided to retame it to show you the animation of what he looks like when he's tranquilized. He was tranquilized, popped a little bit of kibble, popped some appetizer mod, and uh, he was up and ready in no time. Now, I do want to mention that the appetizer in Ark Survival Evolved didn't actually work on the acro last I played, so we had to wait. But now it does work on him, which is great because it, it takes forever for the food to go down. Anyway, he's an acro, so I named him Arcantos. Um, that is an Age of Mythology reference, if you've ever played that game. I haven't played that game in many years, but I remember that dang old character. Anyway, that's my acro taming my very first acro. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you later. Bye.